Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. Welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 211, and it's titled The Extended Orgasm Practice with Alicia Devon. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people have heard of the extended orgasm practice or maybe other variations that are similar, but my experience has been a lot of people misunderstand what it actually is. And so today we have Alicia with us, which we'll be introducing in a little bit, but we're, re we're really going to dive into what is the practice? Why would you want to do it? How could it help your relationship? What are the benefits of it? What are maybe potential downsides of it? Who knows? And more specifically, how you can get started at home. So if you need a new practice, if you know you want something to take your connection to the new level, tune in to today's episode. I mean, come on, who who wouldn't want an extended orgasm, right? I'm not sure. Who says no to that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's like... Nah, you know, that 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 30 Tomorrow. second one was plenty. Yeah, like, another day. Like nobody says that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we introduce our guests, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors, Bauer and Mastery. So if you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual training for men, whether you want to have harder erections, last longer or increase your sexual skills there is something for you at power and mastery.com all right so today we have alicia davon along with her husband erwan oh i did it right <laughs> <laughs> has become the go the go-to expert for those seeking a higher level of relationship support since 2003 alicia specializes in supporting singles in getting into passionate and successful relationships and helping couples take their relationship to new heights of romance and intimacy. Based in the SF Bay Area, Alicia provides a high-end boutique service that gives her clients an effective way to enhance their relationships. She and Erwan offer all of their coaching and classes online and support students all over the world. So welcome to the Love Lab podcast, Alicia. <laughs> Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. All right. So we're just going to dive right in because who doesn't want to know about extended orgasms? Can you give the listeners an overview of what the extended orgasm practice is? And we'll go into the, you know, the benefits and all that kind of stuff, but just like, what, what does it entail? What is it really? What are we talking about? What are we talking about here? Yes, yes. Well, I am sure for many people that are listening, it might sound a little mysterious, like what is extended orgasm, or I can't even have a regular orgasm, or sometimes I have trouble with that, or what could be better than the orgasms I'm already having, you know, people don't really know what it is when you hear extended orgasm. So Extended orgasm, I'll describe what it is and then describe the most optimal practice to create extended orgasm. So what extended orgasm is, is when we have what we call a traditional peak orgasm, like the orgasm that we all know, which is there's some kind of buildup of sensation. And then at a certain point, there's a climax and you quote unquote, go over the edge, maybe as a man, you ejaculate, or there's like that rapid set of contractions and that extreme pleasure. And it's like, we all love that and want that and want more of that. So that's like an orgasm, right? There's certain signs, clinical signs that show that a person is in orgasm. This was studied by Masters and Johnson back in, I think, the 60s. I mean, I remember just a quick side story. I was in college at UC Santa Barbara in California, and I was in my human sexuality class. And the class was in this humongous lecture hall, like hundreds and hundreds of students, humongous, big screen at the front of the room. And we were studying orgasm, Masters and Johnson. And there was this huge <laughs> female 
vagina on the screen. And they were like, this is what a woman looks like when she's having these clinical signs of orgasm. And it was literally like the biggest one I had ever seen. And everyone's like, ah. and they talked about the clinical signs of orgasm, which of course is the involuntary contractions in the genitals. And there's other signs like flushing of the skin and increased heart rate and darkness around the eyes and engorgement of the erectile tissue, like lips and nipples and genitals and so on. There's about 12 signs. So extended orgasm is being in a state of orgasm. So rather than it being like a nine to 12 second or 20 second experience, then it's over. Your body actually has the ability to, when totally relaxed and at a certain level of arousal, just release into a full body state of that orgasmic sensation and pleasure with all of those signs. So that's what extended orgasm is, extended over time, extended throughout the body. And is it something that's for the men, for the women, both? What are we talking about here? Everyone is capable of having extended orgasm throughout their body. For a variety of reasons in our school, we focus on female extended orgasm. And I can get into why later. And it's not to the exclusion of male extended orgasm at all. We are all capable of it. It is a birthright. Well, you know, I have to say, I never had any fun classes like that in college. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't. Like my classes were statistics and money credit and banking and every math class you could possibly No, no false in vagina? No, no. <laughs> I, I had American government class. I mean, I studied business and political science in, in university. So um, yeah, I didn't have any fun uh, classes where there were giant vaginas on the screens. Boy, I wish there was. We would have had a field day with that one. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I studied psychology in that whole realm of things. So I got to take some pretty fun classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so so the listeners now understand what we're talking about. Um, I'm going to kind of go off script a little bit here because oh, right, the question that, I, that really begs asking, and this comes from having many discussions with both clients and friends on this topic is why would somebody want to do this? And let me, let me just set this up for a minute because we have had discussions. We had friends over for a dinner party one time and we were explaining, you know, the hours long lovemaking and the the multiple orgasms and things that we experience. And one of the guys just sat there and said, why would you, do, why would you want to do that? And in my mind, like my head is exploding. Cause in my mind, why would you not want to do this? Like who in their right mind says no to this? Like, you know, anyway. So my question to you is why would somebody want to extend their orgasm? Okay, this is a really good question. And you mentioned this in your intro also. Um, really, for the pleasure of it. That's it. We live in a culture, there's nothing wrong with it, but we live in a very production-oriented culture and results-oriented culture. And it's sort of like, well, what is this going to get me? What is this going to accomplish? Why? And my experience is that pleasure is a worthwhile goal just because I've never actually met anybody who, when it came down to it, didn't really want to have more pleasure, not because they're missing pleasure necessarily, but just because why not? Now, there are a lot of reasons why not. I mean, it's kind of like, okay, if our bodies are capable of having this kind of pleasure, why are we not engaging in this all of the time, right? I mean, there's a lot of reasons we have conditioning, um, particularly as women, but men also around sexuality and pleasure and release and release of control. And, you know, there's a lot of psychological reasons and fears why, why one may not want to go there. So that's a whole other topic, totally worth going into uh, at some point. <laughs> but I'll just say that as like a blanket statement that it's completely valid and normal to feel like, ooh, no, no, I don't know, or or feel afraid of that for some reason. Yeah, yeah. So 
I would add to, so for the sheer pleasure of it, of course, right? Why not? It's a healthy way to enjoy pleasure. It's certainly a whole lot healthier than saying, hey, let's go out and get, you know, annihilated with alcohol or drugs or, you know, anything that people do when they're seeking pleasure, but that really has a negative impact on themselves, their physical body, their relationships, all that. So for sure, that's it. But I would also add to it that if you can reach those deep levels of orgasmic pleasure with your partner, you're also creating really deep bonds with that person, right? So like the difference, the way you bond with your partner when say, I don't know, you have a one night stand and you have some, you know, sex and it's like, okay, we had some fast sex, we orgasmed, it was great, sort of remember it in the morning. It's nowhere near what you experience when you really go to those deep, deep places with your partner. And so just as a way of cultivating your relationship, deepening your relationship, mm -hmm. the deeper you can go into that sexual ecstasy, I think it also has not just a, hey, that was great and I enjoyed the pleasure, but also, wow, we really also deepened our connection as well. I'm really glad you brought that up because the way that we approach extended orgasm, it's not even really... Um, you know, the physical pleasure is amazing, obviously, but the pathway to having this, you know, full body release and pleasure is letting go of your mind, you know, that kind of peace and presence that we all kind of crave as human beings. I mean, we're so caught up in our minds and distracted a lot of the time. That's just kind of how life is. So the practice for one that might be interested in living beyond that is, you know, how do we release our minds? How do we tap into that peace, that being, that presence that's required for extended orgasm. And then beyond that, the connection, like what you're talking about, the emotional intimacy, the connection, the presence with another if you're single, you can also have extended orgasm and pleasure yourself. So it's available for anybody. But if we're talking about two people engaging in this practice together, it's again, required to really, you know, if you're stroking somebody, we can talk about the optimal extended orgasm practice and position and all that stuff. Cause I think your listeners probably want to know, well, how do you do this really? <laughs> exactly. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Um, but it really requires, you know, if the per one person is pleasuring the other, that they're so deeply connected to the person that's receiving and vice versa. So that is, you know, right on what you're saying, that they're not separate. So no. I, I think it would be good to kind of go into a bit of the how to, but then I want to come back. I want to hear about Alicia's experience with it, because I want to see how it's evolved over the years, how it's transformed maybe your orgasms or your connection to your body. But I think it would make more sense for people to really have a good understanding first. Okay, sure. Fuck the script. No, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> that's how we roll here on the Love Lab. Yeah, well, that's that's good. So you want me to say how to how, how to do it? Yeah, give, it give us like a or... how to, so we get really clear about what's happening here. What are we touching? Who's doing what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and to who? And for <laughs> and how long? Who <laughs> and when and how often? Okay. So Erwin and I have found the most optimal way to create extended orgasm in somebody's body or have it created in your own body. So we'll, we'll talk kind of two people practicing together right now. Okay. And, but, but I am saying, you know, if someone who's single or they like to pleasure themselves, you can completely have extended orgasm. But if you're with someone, <clears throat> let's talk about female orgasm. The reason that we focus on the female orgasm is first of all, because in a man woman relationship, we're just talking man-woman relationship. This can be mapped on to same-sex relationships. There's a masculine role and a feminine role, and it can completely be done there. And we can get more into that if we want to. But let's just first talk about this. The woman's body, you know, we, we have the heat and the turn-on and the sensual energy biologically. 
in our bodies. You know, it's like you watch a, a PBS nature show and like the female lioness, she goes into heat and, and then the male responds and goes to her and then they mate. And that's how it is for female mammals. So attending to our orgasm, our sensual energy is the juice for the sex act, is the juice for the relationship. So attending to that, is, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Second reason is in general, historically, female pleasure has been less attended to by men and women. You know, I mean, most most people know way more about men's genitalia and how to pleasure it than a woman's. I love men. It's okay. It's just sort of how things have developed. So we really like to focus on female first and pleasure. Yeah, we're, so we're always amazed by, you know, because Celine works with a lot of women and we're always amazed by women who come in and they've never even really looked at their own vagina. And they yes. don't even know the, the 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 physiology of it and how it works. I'm like, you own it. How could you not know it? Right. As but men, so we know our penises inside and out, frontwards <laughs> and backwards. Trust me. <laughs> totally. Yeah. There's there's a you know it's it's another topic, but in in our classes we have a big. We're actually in the middle of a series now in one of our classes, mastery of relationship, all about female sexual psychology, and it really comes down to the the conditioning and the shame and the like, Ooh, don't touch and down there and it's dirty. And, you know, just that conditioning we all get. Right. So there's a lot of good reasons for our, that it's a mystery. So let's say there's a man and a woman, the optimal way to create extended orgasm is what there's a giver and there's a receiver often in sex acts, you know, people are sort of trying to give and receive at the same time. And that can work, you know, but it's a more advanced skill to really be able to stay in your own body and feel and receive and also to give and pay attention. So manual stimulation of the clitoris, that is the best way to create extended orgasm in a woman's body. So the way it looks is a woman would be lying down, you know, comfortably, let's say on the bed. The man would sit up by her side. The man's clothed. There's no like, okay, I'm going to do you, you do me. This is like, let me pleasure you. It's optimal because the woman who's receiving the touch gets to be very, very relaxed, not doing anything except for feeling your body. And then the man sitting up by her side, you have full access to her genitals. You can see her genitals, you know, we're like, you're not fumbling around in the dark. You're got light on there. And then you use your index finger to stroke her clitoris. Now there's some lead up to this. You don't want to just go right in for the clitoris, right? You might want to do some nice pleasurable touch and hand on heart, hand on abdomen first and massaging of the thighs and kind of generally warming up, eventually stroking the clitoris. It's a really great seated position as well because you can communicate really easily. You know, there's a whole communication style that we teach where the person receiving can ask for what they want. I mean, isn't that one of the challenges, right? Somebody's touching us and we kind of want it a little different, but we don't know how to say it. And yeah, you can ask for what you want. You know, the stroker can see what's going on, can ask, oh, would you like this? Would you like that? So it's optimal for relaxation, which is a main ingredient of extended orgasm, and it's optimal for arousal. Now you're having your clitoris stroked. A lot of women feel that their clitorises are either too sensitive or not, or like numb. So there's different types of pressure you can use on the clitoris, uh, depending on what's feeling good to the woman. There's pace. You generally want to go more slowly than you think but create a rhythm. So there's a lot of technique around it, but the main ingredient is presence and like feeling each stroke and being present with each other as you're doing it. So I'll stop there to see what questions you have. Great. Perfect place to pause. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the basics of it sound rather simple, Right. So I don't I don't think that our listeners will misunderstand what you've already laid out. But I do want to make a point for them to realize that even though it's physically simple, 
there actually is a significant amount to it because one of the big pieces that you just mentioned was presence, right? Which is something that we teach a lot. And unfortunately, yeah, there are a lot of men that have no idea what that really means, right? So a lot of men will show up to this practice and they'll just be like, okay, here's a clue. Just right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thinking right. about whatever, you know, and not really being focused on what's happening and being really present. So that's a huge skill. And that's not something that you can really learn overnight or honestly, even in a weekend workshop. Like if you go to a workshop and learn how to do this program and they're teaching you presence piece, you're probably going to have to practice that for months before you can really do it. Right. So even though the practice seems simple, there's a lot of subtlety to it that you're going to need some time and some practice to really, really get that. So I, I kind of just, I wanted people to understand that, right? Because, you know, they listen to the show, maybe they're going to go, oh, I'm going to go home and spread your legs and I'm just going to play with your clit and let's see what happens, right? Like there actually is more to it than that. I also wanted to be the devil's advocate and be like, okay, those who know a little bit about this and they might have heard about a practice called oming, which is also stroking of the clits. Like, is this different? Is this the same? Where are we at? Okay, thank you for bringing that up because obviously, if if people have even a little bit of knowledge of this, the first thing they think of is, oh, they're talking about oming. So that's the big pink elephant in the corner of the room. So this, <laughs> is, this is the perfect time to address the differences here between this and what oming is. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay, good, good. So I'll speak from my own experience working with people who have experienced oming and have experienced extended orgasm. So a lot of people don't know that oming was created out of the extended orgasm practice. So Erwan, this is far before he and I met, he learned back then it was called deliberate orgasm. He, he was studying with an organization of people that were teaching deliberate orgasm and he learned it. He started teaching it. He kind of made it his own, eventually started calling it extended orgasm. And then the woman that created Oming actually learned about it from Erwan long time ago and then had asked to teach with him and they were teaching together for a little bit and then they stopped teaching together. It's a whole story. I won't get into the details, but I was around during this time and saw how it all went down. And then she took, took the or extended orgasm practice and made it her own which is great. She called it oming. It became very popular around the world. A lot of people learned how to teach it and practice it. And that's what that is. And that's where it came from. So if you saw somebody like from a distance, if you saw somebody practicing oming and practicing extended orgasm side by side, you might think, well, this is the same thing. It sort of looks the, looks the same. The people are in this seated position and the woman's lying down. Now, I've never practiced oming or been in that scenario, but what I've heard from students of ours that have done both is that there are some differences. So one difference is there's a lot of focus on in oming on one particular part of the clitoris, upper the upper left-hand left quadrant, mm -hmm. right? The upper mm -hmm. left-hand quadrant is known as the most sensitive part of a woman's clitoris. There's truth to that. And what we've found over the years is that that very sensitive part kind of moves around as you're engaging in the stroking practice. So again, it comes back to presence. As the stroker, you really want to be feeling like, oh, wh where am I feeling the most in my finger right now? Wh which means where is she feeling the most? And you're kind of, and it's very subtle, you know, it's not like big movements around, but, oh, this little millimeter and, oh, wow, interesting. I go over to the right side of her clit and I'm feeling the most there right now. So there's more nuance and subtlety and there's kind of permission to move around the clitoris and move with presence. The communication style in extended orgasm seems to be more robust. There's not a lot of back and forth communication in the oming practice, as far as I've seen. And we also teach extended orgasm as a two-handed practice, okay? So there's the left uh, index finger, that's the stroking finger, whether you're a lefty or a righty, that's stroking the clitoris. 
similar in both practices. But we also incorporate the right hand slides underneath the butt of the woman. You just slide it underneath. It's like a nice grounding, anchoring feeling. And then you can use your thumb to stroke the opening of her vagina. It's called the introitus, the opening to the vaginal canal. You're not necessarily inserting your thumb, maybe at the end you're inserting to kind of bring her down, but it's more like, a, it's like a you're playing an instrument, you know, it's like a two-handed practice. And then finally, in the extended orgasm practice, there is a lot of focus on the emotional connection, the spiritual connection and presence. So I'll just stop there to see if you have any questions on that. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. You really, you really explained where it came from, uh, and the, and the differences between the two. Yeah, it, we talked about this in the pre-interview too. Like when I hear these stories, it reminds me so much of the martial arts world because it's something I spent a long time in, and it's like this happens all the time where a master teaches a student that student then becomes a master but then they have a falling out and then they they don't never talk to each other again and they create their own forms and then they they call it this thing and they call it this thing but really the basic form is the same no matter what but they always give it their own little flavor their own little tweak and it's it's just it's kind of hysterical there's so many of those in the martial arts world like you lose count after a while like this one doesn't talk to this one doesn't talk to that one like, so, kind of makes yeah. me laugh the other thing that I would just point out about that particular situation is that, um, you know, a lot of people are aware of some stuff that went down within the Oming organization that was really not cool. And it was more like a cult, too, the way that. They well, it's been described as a cult and not only the business practices and the marketing practices and all that, but some of the stuff that happened within the, the core group of people that all live together and all of that. I just want to make a quick distinction between the organization and how the organization functioned and the practice itself, right? So it's the difference between the messenger and the message, right? So the messenger is often flawed, but the message can still be good. And so you see this a lot with gurus all the time. Maybe they have a great spiritual message to give, but they had some sort of flaw where they were compulsive, compulsive sex addicts or something like that. And everybody's like, oh, see, everything he said was a lie, right? let's let's not go there right so just because oming had a problem with its organization doesn't mean that the practice isn't necessarily good or beneficial so wanted to yep it's a it's a great point of course it's the don't throw the baby out with the bathwater thing right i mean yeah erwan had to kind of separate because of some of the things that you're talking about so there's no association between the two organizations but the practice i mean more clit stroking, right? As much clit stroking as possible. How, who cares how, what, what, you know, it's like, that's a good thing. Having clit, more clit stroking good... makes the world a better place. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So I think it's great. You know, I mean, I think it's beautiful. So what about the women who's listening and wondering like, well, I know how to stroke my clit. I like to do this. It takes me three minutes. It takes me five minutes. Why would I give it more time? Or like, I can't even relax or do this. Uh, I, I, you know, these are all questions that obviously my clients bring to me. So I'm just curious about your opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's see when we're in the realm of pleasure, we don't want to have any shoulds. Like I'm not here to be like, well, people should have extended orgasm, and if they're not, like it's bad and they're not good enough and all of this. It really just wants to call to you, you know, like, oh, that sounds nice. You know, like mm -hmm. I like my three minute orgasms, however I have them. Great. Do them as much as you want to. And if it kind of feels compelling, like, wow, I wonder, wow, my body's capable of having extended orgasm and I can be relaxed and it's like not a goal orientation, but it's something that I can just relax into and feel and have that color my life, you know, with more vital energy, like that sounds fun, you know, that's, and the other thing is, um, I get this question a lot, Erwan and I do demonstrations of extended orgasm where we, we do the practice in front of a big crowd of people. And we also do it online now, um, to make it more accessible for people. And I always get this question. It's some version of like, well, you know, 
if you're if you're like female empowerment, you know, owning your own pleasure, why do you need him to give you the pleasure and you know that kind of thing? <laughs> and my answer is always some version of I don't need it, but I like it. I mean, there's something about being able to be completely at the effect of someone else that that you trust, you know, that's a good choice to be at the effect of. You, you can go further, you know, or or have more when you aren't being giver and receiver for yourself. And again, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure. Oh, this is one of the, this is one of the biggest and dumbest things that the feminist movement does. Yeah. Why you don't need a man. What do you need <laughs> a man for? Look, the correct place is you don't need him, but you want him. Yeah. There's a dynamic that's created between the two of you that isn't there when you're by yourself. I'm not going to say it's better necessarily. Maybe some people think it is, but it's different. It's a different dynamic. And then, of course, what you're describing is one of the things you said at the very beginning of this is to really get into this extended orgasm, you have to be completely relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. The only way, well, the easiest way, at least, to be fully relaxed is to not have to do anything. <laughs> right. So if you actually have to be the one doing it, you're doing something. Now your brain is engaged, right? Now you're thinking, am I doing the stroke right? Am I hitting the upper left quadrant? Am I, is this taking too long? Right. Like maybe I'm not going to get there. All this crap mm -hmm. that ends up coming in your head, that's going to block you from being able to really get there. Whereas if you have a man who's helping you, you can just let go of all of that and just sit back, let your eyes roll to the back of your head in pleasure and just <laughs> enjoy. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Yes, indeed. And I can see there's so much potential for one of the elements that so many women crave is safety. And somehow, and we did a whole show on that. We did. It's a um, great one. Somehow a lot of men don't always know how to create it. But this practice can really start to put the seeds for that safety, that trust, that respect, and the communication. Mm hmm. Yes. Presence creates safety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually, I mean, of course, there's situations that are, you know, objectively unsafe, you know, sexually that people find themselves in. But normally, it's kind of like we just carry a sense of unsafety because of past experiences or just feeling conflicted about our own sexuality or not feeling connected to our partner or something like that. And um, it, it's it's a big deal to really let someone else kind of have their their strength and and surrender yourself into their hands. And I like to think about it really as surrendering into to your own pleasure. You mm -hmm. know, it's really nice, like you're saying, to be able to like relax and let go and feel. And you know, sometimes that's more difficult either at a certain time for a couple, like maybe there it's been a while since you've been intimate or sexual, either because you know, you've had kids or you've just been together for a while, or there's been some issue in the relationship. And this practice is also really nice because it can be used either as a stepping stone to other sex acts or just this beautiful practice in and of itself. That's pretty benign, you know, and but so pleasurable for both, for both. Even if the man is the giver and the stroker, it can be extremely pleasurable. I want to have some um, clarity around when do we stop? Is there a timer? Mm -hmm. Is this is it the orgasm? <laughs> or what makes it that we're like, okay, this is the end? Great question. Yes, because the the orientation of extended orgasm is pleasure, not a goal. Mm -hmm. So it's not even, and it, it sometimes takes a bit for people to get this. So who, how, whoever's listening, don't worry if this makes sense or not. But usually when we approach orgasm, we're like, okay, I got to get to the orgasm, mm -hmm. obviously, right? And sometimes that's through tension or fast rubbing or whatever it is. And that's all fine. The When you're really released in extended orgasm, the experience is that experience of, of going over the edge, climaxing, but it's, it's, it's continual. You're not getting there through tension. Your body naturally releases into that. So it's incredibly blissful. 
And some people are like, oh my God, I'd be so exhausted, but no, because you're relaxed. So there's nowhere to get to. So to your question, a timer is a perfectly fine thing to do. We recommend when people start practicing this, you know, they might, they practice it 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, at the most, because you really want to be present with each other and really feeling, you don't want to like keep stroking if the person being stroked is sort of done and not feeling and numbed out or whatever, <laughs> right? So the goal isn't a climax. The goal is, is pleasure and connection. So mm-hmm. you can set a timer. Um, sometimes we say you can do it kind of for the length of a song because it's kind of nice. You can follow the flow of the song. Um, it's often more comfortable, especially at the beginning for the receiver to know, okay, we're going to do this for five minutes. So we're going to do this for 20 minutes or whatever. So um And there's, with the technique, ways that you can kind of signify, okay, we're ending now, you know, firmer pressure, slower strokes. So it's not hinging on, okay, have a climax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you don't want to just abruptly stop either. (laughs) No, that's the surefire way to have a fight, you know? It's like, ah, and then, huh? (laughs) All right, so we've got a ton of questions and not very much time left. Let's take a quick break for our next sponsor, and then we're going to get into your personal experience a little bit. Okay, are you a committed couple who is stuck in a rut or just going through the daily motions instead of connecting the way that you used to? Are you tired of stale mechanical sex that lacks spontaneity and fun, and you don't want to live a life of average? Then we'd like to invite you to join our highly sex power couple, Platinum program. Give us 90 days and we will help you bring back the passion between the sheets and be synced up sexually so that you can thrive. As I have mentioned before, when I read this commercial, this is Celine and I's coaching program where we, the two of us together, work with you as a couple and you'll do sessions with the both of us. You'll do sessions with us individually and we will make sure that we get your sex life and your relationship back on track. So if that sounds like something you want to do, go to celineremy.com forward slash passion. That is celineremy.com forward slash passion. Okay, now that the sponsor's out of the way. So this is a great conversation. It's really fascinating. And since we have somebody here who is an expert in the practice, we really want to know how what your personal experience is with this and how maybe that's evolved over the years that you and Erwin have been together and have been doing this practice. And then later on, I want to hear what it's like for you to perform this in front of large groups of people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I knew that question was coming. <laughs> okay, so I'll start by saying, um, sometimes people hear this about me and they're like, where did you grow up? Like, what? Wow, are you so out there or something? Like I had a very lovely and conventional upbringing. I just got back from LA visiting my parents for a week with my son. I adore them. They're the best, totally conventional. I grew up in a suburb of LA and my father's a physician. My mom's a stay at home mom. I have a brother, you know, my parents still live in the same house that I grew up in. Lucky for me, it's so beautiful and cozy. And I won't go into my entire whole story that would take forever, but, you know, I studied psychology and went into therapy during college and was just kind of found my way into studying female sexuality and psychology. Cause that was what I was really, really interested in. And my friend, when I was in my graduate program, getting my master's in psychology, a friend of mine was like, you need to meet this guy, Erwan. You know, he mm-hmm. teaches these classes and there's a course called the pleasure course. And there's this interesting technique, extended orgasm that brings together presence and sex. I'm like, take me to this guy. I need to meet him. <laughs> take me to your leader. <laughs> take me to your leader. Yes. And so I met him. She brought me over to his place where he was teaching like a communication games group that night or something. And I just remember walking into his apartment in San Francisco and it was like crossing a threshold and it was like coming onto a drug. I mean, nobody was on drugs there. It was just like the presence and the connection and that really great feeling you get. I felt like home. And I was in another relationship at the time, yada, yada, bunch of months went by. I end up dating Erwan. Okay. So I'm like, he's hot. I need to get to know him. So I'm over at his house and I had a pretty good kind of orgasmic life before that, I guess I could have orgasms. I love sex. 
And I really wanted to try the extended orgasm practice. So I'm like, what's this extended orgasm thing? He's like, I'll show you. So we go and <laughs> walk into my, not his office. It was his bedroom. We were dating. And um, he had this like red light bulb in his lamp and it was casting this amazing glow. And he's like, just lie down. And so he sat up by my side, got all set up and he started stroking my clitoris. And I remember being like, at first I'm like, wait, am I supposed to have an orgasm now? Or am I supposed to do something? And he was like, just feel my finger on your clitoris. Like feel every stroke I'm stroking up. Do you feel that? I'm like, yes. He's like, okay, I'm going down. Yes. Oh, yes. And I was just feeling the actual contact between us. And every time I would have kind of an involuntary contraction, like a sign of orgasm, he'd be like, oh, wow, that was a, wow. I just felt a contraction. It was like this dude was sports casting the (laughs) orgasm. And I'm like, this is crazy. So it was a little, it was different. It felt really good. I felt completely, um, you know, expansive, like that high feeling, very aware, very tuned into my body. And about, you know, 15 minutes in, he's like, okay, great. I'm going to bring you down now. I'm going to give you some firmer pressure. And I'm like, wow, I just felt so um, bead with, like he was so with me in my experience. There was no goal. So my body felt amazing, buzzy and alive. And that was my first experience of extended orgasm. So of course I'm going to hold on to this guy, right? I'm like, this is, this is great. Don't mess this up, Alicia. So we, (laughs) we start dating and then a few months into it. um, Let me see. Let me see where I want to go with this. Okay. I will tell you this part. So I wanted to visit the pleasure course, this course he teaches. I'm like, what is this thing you teach? So he's like, oh, you can come visit. And I thought I'd be sitting in the back of the room, like observing this class, but no, I walk in and it's being led in this big house that he was now living in, uh, South of San Francisco, 20 people living in this house, like researching and studying orgasm and that kind of thing. He put me in the course, like my seat was like right in the front with this big group of people. And I was in the experience and I saw a woman it, it, you know, do a demonstration of extended orgasm. Like, what the heck is this? This is amazing. And I got, that was the day that I decided, okay, I'm going to finish my master's program, but I'm not going to go be a therapist. I'm going to join this, this, this group, this organization. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, sorry, Erwan, you're stuck with me. I'm not only your girlfriend, but I need to do these classes with you. So there I was a few courses later, I'd volunteer at all of them. And we were learning about the extended orgasm in the class. And back then we had people practicing the practice. This is way back in the early 2000s before this would have, you know, not worked. We don't do that anymore. People don't practice in our classes. Everybody practices in the privacy of their own home. But Erwan said, hey, people are asking for a demonstration. Do you want to do it? I'm like, yeah. I was in my early 20s in the middle of this course, didn't have time to even think about it. So then all of a sudden, there I am, like laying in this little like nest on the floor, like 40 people in a crowd looking at me. And then Erwan and I did the extended orgasm practice in front of them with this beautiful music playing. And I was like, just in the experience. And then I remember sitting up (laughs) to face the group afterwards and I like sit up. And then I'm like eye to eye with my best friend and roommate who was in the course. And she just looked at me and she said, goddess, that was amazing. (laughs) And I was like, oh, and I just felt so much love. So that was the first time I did a demonstration. And then it was like, I broke the seal. You know, I did it. I had done it and I knew that it was fine. And I find it to be very educational. I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years Um, and it's a beautiful experience. Yeah, I think you know you could well first of all let me just say this that <laughs> god damn have we gotten prude in this society like I know, you, you, you I can't know. even get together in in a, a safe environment and practice this stuff anymore so fucking ridiculous but having said that if you're not going to be practicing it yourself like you could do all the the powerpoint presentations you want but until you really see it happen like it's you're just not going to get it you're just yeah. not going to get it 
Um, and fortunately for you, you're a woman, so performance anxiety is a less of a thing than it is for guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Lynn and I have had sex in front of groups of people many times. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's a whole different thing when you're on the male side. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I know. I can imagine. <clears throat> so have, has your enjoyment of the extended orgasm practice changed over the 20 years? Do you still love it, it the same or less oh, or what's happening oh, there? It, I haven't found a ceiling. It increases. It's kind of like when you really let go into life and being, and it's so naturally dynamic and it shifts and changes and the enjoyment potential increases. I haven't found a ceiling on the pleasure of extended orgasm. And it's also such a necessary ingredient in my relationship with Erwan. You know, I mean, we've been together for 20 years. We're married. We have a child. We work together. I mean, there's so many factors that can knock us off course as couples. We have tons of them and we're also human and have issues like everyone. And the extended orgasm practice is a really great anchor. I mean, we practice it almost every day together. And sometimes we incorporate it into other sex acts, which is another conversation. Um, But it's just deeper all the time. It's, It's incredible. No wonder she's so happy. She's getting her clit stroked every day. I know, right? No, that is the key. Men that are listening there, to this, you there know, there you like go, a man. Super clitoris. That is the key. There you go, right there. Give her lots of orgasms and stroke her clitoris every day. That is the secret to a successful relationship. Well, Erwan jokes. He would he would say this, so I can say it. But he's he's like an intense dude, you know. I mean, he's got a crazy traumatic childhood. Grew up in Manhattan. Da da da. He's a handful, but he's like, I live in a state of grace. She forgives all my wrongdoings because (laughs) I struggle with my foot. Well, if you only take one thing from today's show, that's the thing. (laughs) That's the one right there. That's right. (laughs) Okay. Well, we are running short on time. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to get to our last two questions and skip the couple before that. But I think people have a pretty good idea yes. of what it is and how it can change your life and all of that. So the the next question, the uh, next to last question, is just, you know, how does somebody get started? Like somebody wants to start this practice. Yeah. You mean like on their own, like how they would or, go about doing that or? Well, however, like, you know, do you suggest that they go and take a workshop with you? Do you suggest they do your online programs? Do they just start on their own? Like somebody's listening to this and like, this now is what? fucking amazing. Okay, I need to hey, do hey, this hey. like right now. Like okay, what do good. they do? <laughs> good. Okay. So there, there is, it's like perfect timing that we're talking right now because there's a really easy way for people to get started with this that are listening. So we have several ways that people can work with us. Like we have a big kind of community weekly online group experience. We have private coaching. We also, we do have, um, this is a side note, a very advanced program where a couple can work with us privately and learn the extended orgasm practice, like literally practice it you know, in front of us, we verbally coach them, we do demonstrations. So there is that people usually like to work with us in other ways first, because that is like a, it's a big commitment, right? And very intimate. But we have a weekend class that's online. It's coming up at the end of September and it's called the pleasure course. And it is a weekend diving into our whole method of how to create a successful relationship in sex life. So it's not only about extended orgasm. We go into presence and meditation and dealing with your psychological patterns and masculine feminine dynamics and communication and all sorts of stuff. But there's a big section on the second day on orgasm and extended orgasm. And we show a video demonstration. We go through what orgasm is and is not. And it it provides a really good jumping off point because you'll see the practice and you'll have it described to you. And then we also give you a set of sensuality exercises to start with. So that I can give the details whenever you guys are ready for me to do that. But that would be a really great place for people to start. Yeah, just give them the website or where to go, and then we'll make sure we have the links in the description below as well. 
Yes. And I want to say, and this is like a special thing, but I think I mentioned this when we talked earlier. I mean, based on you too, I'm sure your listeners are super awesome. And (laughs) ended orgasm is such a big deal. I mean, it's like, there's so much potential and there's a lot to learn. So I want to offer your listeners for the first 10 people that contact me about it. I will put them in the pleasure course for free. Ooh, oh, wow. That's big. Yes. It's September 24th and 25th. It's online, normally costs two ninety five, dollars but I'll give you basically the two ways to contact me. The first one is text to text our school, which is 415-308-9580. There's also a link people can click instead to contact me. So I'll give that to you for the show notes. Just say your name, say you heard about it on your podcast, and then the first 10 people will get free admission. And then anybody who contacts me after that, you can use a hundred dollars off code and be in the course. I just, I want you guys and your listeners to have access to it because it's coming up. It's like super timely. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Well, make sure that you get in the front of the line. Although even (laughs) if you, even if you're not at the front of the line, you still get a hundred bucks off. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe we should take the course, Kevin. (laughs) Sure. Why not? I'll struggle clitoris all day. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we've got one last question. You want to ask the last question? Yes. It's always our favorite. So Alicia, what is your best sexual talent? (laughs) My best sexual talent, I would say, is in pretty much no matter whatever situation, I can let go of my mind, put it aside and fully, fully enjoy sex. You know, that's a pretty damn good talent yes. because you know what? Most women just can't do that. Correct. They just that, can't. That's the biggest roadblock. I think pretty much every woman I work with is how do I get out of my head? How yes. do I get to enjoy sex? That's This is what we work on all the time. Yep. Yep. Right. It's, most people have that issue. So it's good to be able to overcome it. Well, of course. So if you do possess that talent, then that also means that you are probably highly orgasmic because that's the key to getting there. (laughs) Uh Exactly. (laughs) But don't forget, you get a a clit stroke every single day. Yeah. You know what they say, an an orgasm a day (laughs) keeps everything else away. All right, Alicia, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for explaining what you guys do and for bringing more orgasms to the world. We need more orgasms. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody. That's all the time we have for this episode, and we will see you next week. We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>